Cool. So Chicago. Yeah. Your I favorite team. Rudely interrupted me. AKA okay. the future of the golden boot. Oh boy. boy here we go. Part two. <laughs> <laughs> if I say it every year, it's bound to still the probably be wrong every single better. year. The odds no. keep getting better. Are they? <laughs> I think your odds probably got worse. <laughs> <clears throat> um sorry, just on a side note before we get to Chicago. Emerson Heinemann has checked into a friendly match for MLS team LAFC. Yeah, I saw a note that he was training with them. Oh, where is this roster space coming from? Who is allowing this to happen? He'll he'll probably be cheap, I think, because he's coming off a season where he was pretty banged up. I think you know his his market value was definitely on the downturn, so I think they're picking him up at a probably cheap price. They needed it. it. They needed the midfield depth. They did. So, was probably a good move for them. We're going to Chicago. Ezra Hendrickson is in his third year after finishing twelfth in the East with thirty nine points. Tell me what type of shape you're thinking about for them. I've also got them in a four two three one. You're... I've got hopefully Chris Brady in goal. Maybe that's optimistic because I I think they did sign a goalkeeper. Um, I've got Arno so- Soquet so- Suquet. Oh yeah, that was fantastic. <laughs> Flip um, it. Flip it. <laughs> my French manager is definitely gonna yell at me for that one. Uh, Carlos Terran and Rafael Chicos at center back. Miguel Navarro at left back. Two center mids ahead of them are I got Federico Navarro and Gaston Jimenez in the attack behind the striker I have got Chris Mueller, uh, Jordan Shakiri, and Brian Gutierrez and then up top I've got Casper Shabilko Interesting um, Also got the same shape, Chris Brady in goal uh, Jeff Gold did come over but spent most of his time in the Swedish league, uh, Swedish second division if I remember correctly um, nope. This guy does Swedish his first division. Oh, never mind. He doesn't do his research. No, no. Spoke I knew too was, soon. I knew it was Sweden. I didn't know if it was uh, professional podcast. Yeah, you know how we do. You know how we do. Um, but yeah. So so he came in. He came. All right. So his the team before that was his second division side. Sorry, we're spending way too much time on Jeff Gall here. Quiet down. <laughs> Um, I don't think I don't think I think they're going Brady person. Uh, Suquet, Chicos, Pineda, and Navarro right to left. Navarro, other Navarro, and Jimenez uh, in a midfield two pack with Jairo Torres, Shakiri, and Mueller um, in that front three with Jabilko up top. I think Suquet is their best addition personally. Uh, I, I think they needed right back help desperately, and they got it. So happy to see that. Yeah, I don't think there was a lot of competition, but uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Suquet also. Considering, uh, yes, they, they lost Sekulic, so someone yeah. needed to slide into that right back spot. Talk to me about their biggest loss, though. I went with John Duran here. I think that mainly because I think it's the timing of the sale, I don't think that they had much time ahead of the season to bring someone in to replace him. And not that they necessarily need to, because I think Casper Shabilko is fine to um, jump in there at the striker spot, but it didn't seem like they loved Casper Shabilko at striker. I mean, based on what he was saying last season, they liked him more on the wings, which, uh, yeah, I don't know if that makes they, sense they to me. Started, but... They started him in the, in the central role, but when, the attack, when they got into the attacking phase of the game, he would drift out wide, like, you know okay. how in FIFA you can set your tactic as like stay central or drift wide? Yeah. yeah he yeah. was set to drift wide. Okay. It still doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I'm going to go. I think you could go with like Gaga Slanina or Duran here. But like I said, considering the timing of the Duran sale, there really wasn't like a ton of time for them to reinvest that money. So I'll go with him. I also went with Duran. Um, a lot of a lot of what you're saying, I agree with. And the fact that really it's. They got rid of a four uh, the year before, and now they've got Duran gone, and you're looking at Jabilko and a 
23 year old and a 20 year old to back him up, uh, both with minimal MLS experience. So, um, yeah, I, I think I think that's a that's a massive loss for them because there's no second option. It's Jabil or it's nobody. Uh, player I'm watching, and I think it's kind of obvious, Chris Brady. Uh, I think they're they're going to give him the opportunity to take that spot. Uh, and they're going to try and, and do the Gaga Slinina thing and see who comes knocking because he is a massive, massive part of the USU 20 team that is absolutely torching teams right now. And uh, and I think they're getting ready for him to just do it. Yeah, I figured you would go Brady, so I would pick somebody different. Um, considering I have Gutierrez starting in my team, I picked Brian Gutierrez. Uh, it looked like he was starting a decent number of games towards the end of last season. He's in on the right wing. So I figured they would probably stick with that and he would get game time again. Uh, so, you know, if he gets consistent game time throughout the whole season, I think there's potential for him to break out and uh, maybe be that next young player on the team to to develop and get a move. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, ask a question. I might sound crazy for this question, to be honest with you. <laughs> you and me both. All right, let's go. But despite the bad results in recent years, is Chicago beginning to become one of the better development teams in the league? They just sold Gaga Slanina. They sold John Duran. Young guys that they developed and got good prices for. I see guys in this team that I feel like kind of fit that narrative again. Brian Gutierrez... You have Chris Brady. Like if they develop these guys and sell them on again, you know, who's to say that this isn't the start of them being like a good development team, even if the results aren't there. Kind of reminds me of like Dallas from a few years ago when like Dallas just like wasn't a great team, but they just knew how to develop players and sell them on. Am I not the question? A little, a <laughs> little completely opposite. <laughs> Only because mine is complete opposite. This team was third to last in the East last year. Well, not not complete opposite, but they were third to last in the East last year. They brought in basically nobody. Mm-hmm. They lost their best goal scorer and their goalkeeper, who is like U.S. national team level goalkeeper. Is this team on a track for the wooden spoon this year? Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt that. Honestly, I I think our both of our questions could still be like correct. I think they could yeah, still develop I, young players while still like playing poorly in the league. And and how long is that a sustainable business model? Let's be real. Probably not. I mean, as long as well, as long as there's no pro rel, I think you could probably do that infinitely. Yeah, it, it becomes. Yeah, you you're you're supplementing your lack of ticket sales and merchandise with. Player sales. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, it's right. You know, it's a, it's a question of like, are you making fifteen million in like ticket sales throughout the year? Oh, I you know, it. like, what, it, it, maybe it's worth it to kind of sacrifice it. I don't know. I don't run the guest podcast. What do you think, Grace? <laughs> she's telling. I, me I think she that... said, "I, you know, I'm, I am actually a dog whisperer." I think she said she agrees with my question. She's telling me that Connor's hair is way worse than mine, uh, and we need to move on because we probably shouldn't spend that much time talking about Chicago anyway. That's very fair. 